Want to know everything about a brand new dining plan, Halloween Horror Nights construction, the Olympics going away but also coming, and more? Well, you're in the right place, for you're watching WUNU, your weekly universal news and updates, where I'm going to go over all of that and more. Let's get straight into it with my first topic. Halloween Horror Nights, where this week we have some announcements and we have some cool construction. So this week, Universal will confirm that Scare Actor Dining will not be making a return to Halloween Horror Nights this year. Now, we can only hope that it's going to return in future years, however, probably just because of COVID restrictions or however Universal is doing it, they do not want to have Scare Actor Dining this year. Now, though this is a very disappointing thing, it is not a main attraction of Halloween Horror Nights, as in... It's not something that you get with your base ticket, you'd have to pay extra for it. However, if you're planning to do this, just understand that it's not happening this year. Into the construction, on Monday, random metal pole supports were placed on either side of the London entrance that faces near the Fear Factor Live Stadium. However, another one of these frames would also be placed in front of Transformers. And, along this one, another would appear raced through New York with Jimmy Fallon. Along with those, more of these would appear on the bridge between London and Springfield. And another one would be placed in San Francisco. Plus, another one near Mel's Drive-In. Now, obviously, this is a ton of things. However, from what I can tell, these are lighting rigs that are going to be used for scare zones in Halloween Horror Nights. Now, understand when I'm going through all of this construction, none of it is really 100% sure, except for some small parts that this is for Halloween Horror Nights. So, just understand that though I believe this is for scare zones, it might not be in some big twist of events. Also, in New York, two large tarped pillars with fences and beams holding them together would appear in New York. And a photo spot sticker was placed on the ground in front of the structure, meaning it's going to be some sort of photo opportunity. Also, on the same day, next to Cafe La Bamba, tall pillars with green scrim on them would be built. Now, this is also probably for a scare zone thing, as there's usually a scare zone here in what is considered the Central Park area. Also, in small fenced off areas in Central Park, speakers would be placed, yet again also probably for the scare zone. Back in New York, in front of Revenge of the Mummy, a large black box with fences on top of it emerged, and lighting would also be built on top of the rooftops in New York City. Lighting would also be placed on top of Mel's Drive-In and in Hollywood. Later on in the week, one of the structures would receive a concrete-looking texture with the number 1 on it. The large pillars in New York would receive a stage in front of them, and on these, signs reading, Pardon our dust, we are in the process of transforming our park for Halloween Horror Nights, and Do Not Climb will be placed on it. This is the part that we know for sure is for Halloween Horror Nights. At this time, a platform was also placed between the lower fences. Also, a large banner with a red and black logo would be hung down the side of these tarped boxes. For another structure in this area that was added, a barrel with tubes coming out of it with a tarp over it would be placed. A logo of an eye with gears is seen on the barrel. Out of the back of the tarp, a fake hand tied to the barrel is seen. Another similar prop was also seen elsewhere in New York, plus another one, totaling three of these barrel props. Now, these actually would be removed the next day, making them only be out for one day. Over at Cafe La Bamba, two more tall green poles would be built more further into the Central Park area. These poles would also have lights attached to them later on. Back in New York, another two raised platforms would appear, and these would also receive a concrete texture, with the numbers 2 and 3 on them. Another tarp over box would appear in front of the Revenge of the Mummy, this one having two background black tarps behind it. This would also receive the concrete texture, however no number. Also, the trees in Production Central were removed. Now this is usually done to make way for Halloween Horror Nights, so that's what we're assuming they're for. And finally, lighting was also placed on the awnings in Production Central, also probably for a scare zone. So that was a lot of construction, however this event does have some good food, and we're going to talk about that type of thing in my next topic.
food and restaurants, where we have some really good dining news. So this week, Universal announced that they will be a part of Orlando's Magical Dining Plan. This starts on August the 22nd and ends on October the 3rd. The plan includes the island's dining room, Mama Della's Restaurante, a Mista cookhouse, and the kitchen. However, it is stated that throughout this event, more restaurants will most likely be added. This event makes it so that each meal sold in these restaurants will donate a dollar toward the organization's Pathlight Home and Indigene, which help fight homelessness in Central Florida. So, just by eating at these restaurants, you're helping charity. And if you ask me, that is one of the best win-wins you could ask for. Also, bulk candy in the island market and export candy shop is self-serve again, so you can now get your own candy and don't have to kind of just order it and get it from other people. So that was some places where you can get food. However, let's look at a place that has arguably better food for my next topic. City Walk, where this week we have some Olympic news. So this week, the Olympic rings for the Ring Around the World Tour would leave as scheduled. Now, these are no longer in front of the arches where they originally were, so the photo op is now gone. Also, the Tokyo Olympic opening ceremony would be shown on the big screens on top of the NBC Bar and Grill. Also for the Olympics, a merchandise kiosk has new Olympic Team USA shirts and pins of five different varieties, all for the Team USA. As for more merchandise, the studio store has new retro crop tops and tank tops, along with a Lucius Malfoy bookmark and pen set a Marauder's Map mug, in which the map appears when the mug is hot, a Chocolate Frog Squishy Toy, 1,000 piece puzzles themed to Davi, The Great Hall, Gringotts Bank Escape, Diagon Alley Shop Signs, The Quibbler Magazine Cover, and Dementors at Hogwarts. So that's some news out of the parks, but let's look at some news in the parks for my next topic. General news, where we have quite a large variety of things. So this week, an injury log was sent out for Orlando theme parks. Now, Universal only had one incident, which was a 58-year-old woman experiencing a headache after getting off of Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure. Now, though this doesn't sound particularly extreme, sometimes these things are very underreaction ways of saying major things about injuries. However, we are not sure if this was just a headache or if it was actually a major injury. However, either way, this is all that was logged in the log. Also, some window facades will be blocked off with curtains. And as I am saying this, I am realizing that this is for Halloween Horror Nights and I put this in the wrong topic, but it's too late to go back and change it, so it's here now. Also, the Olympic opening ceremony would also be shown at the Music Plaza stage, as it was also being shown at the NBC Bar and Grill in City Walk. The cabbie and his taxi would actually be moved to the front of the park by Today Cafe, instead of in the Central Park area, so you can now meet him here. Also, the Fast and the Furious F9 photo op near Kid Zone would leave, now meaning that you cannot get this picture with the charger that is a replica from the movie. Finally, signs with the operating hours of the attraction appeared in front of DreamWorks Destination, just making sure that everybody knows it's there. So that's some stuff that's happened in the park, but let's talk about stuff that's been built in the park in my next topic. Construction, where we're starting to get to the end of the video. So this week, barriers were set up around the exit of Fast and the Furious Supercharged around a tree. Now this probably has to do more with the pavement than the actual tree, however these barriers were placed here. Also, a random pillar in front of an Auntie Anne's in New York had fences around it. Really no idea why, but obviously has to do with some sort of construction, or they were just placing these fences here. Finally, a sign advertising DreamWorks destination appeared near E.T. Adventure on a stage. Obviously, Universal is trying to get more and more people to hear with the amount of advertising they're putting out for it. 
So that's some construction. However, let's talk about a theme park that is all construction at the moment for my next topic. Epic Universe, where I have a very monumental, but also boring update. So this week, Epic Universe's first public permit was filed. You want to know what it was for? An electrical pole. A temporary electrical pole permit. Now, I know that this is nothing gigantic. It's just cool to see the first permit ever filed for Epic Universe. This is on its way. We saw track here before. So construction's obviously gonna start soon, and it'll be cool to see this. So I'm sure when this opens, it's gonna have a ton of stuff to sell. And speaking of things to sell, let's talk about a topic all about that stuff for my next topic. Merchandise, where the Halloween Horror Nights news continues. So this week, a Halloween Horror Nights preview merchandise stand appeared at the Five and Dime in New York for a Beetlejuice Snake t-shirt. Now, this is actually a return shirt that had been seen in a preview for Beetlejuice merchandise a few months ago. This would also cause the removal of the Jack is Back shirt that used to be sitting here with the other preview shirts. This shirt would also make an appearance into the online store, and I'm pretty sure it's still here, so you can buy it if you would like. Also, a new pressed penny machine arrived near Fast and the Furious Supercharged, bringing new Fast and the Furious pressed pennies with it. Now, they have the Supercharged Ride logo, one with a car on it, one with a family badge on it, and one with the Fast and the Furious logo. Now for the car one, I do not know the specific car on it, however, it definitely looks pretty cool. Also, Dervish and Banges has a new Marauder's Map wand collection. It includes the wands of Remus Lupin, Peter Pettigrew, Sirius Black, and James Potter. All of the wands are on a hangable blackboard of the Marauder's Map. Also, new Jurassic Park, they were here first, tank tops, and Velociraptor and Logo lounge pants became available. The Jurassic Park lint throw grabs would also become available in Jurassic Outfitters, and the Velocicoaster variant of this would actually sell out on Thursday. New SpongeBob lounge fly backpacks, crossbody bags, and wallets became available. Along with this, the Men in Black store received a new I'm Not From Around Here shirt that has monster silhouettes on it. So that's everything that I could find in Universal Studios Orlando this week. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you made it this far, thank you so much. If you like my content, please leave a like and or subscribe, as you'll probably get more of it pushed to you in the future. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, but with all of that said and done, this is Wunu, signing off.